Welcome back, everybody. If you're new, my name's Nicholas, and this is Investing Against the Green. Today's episode, I want to go through my Twitter feed. I post a lot today, probably more than I've ever posted, just because I thought there's a lot of interesting things to do with Tesla, especially on the day before we get delivery delivery uh, reports, right? Total deliveries for Q2. So I'm going to go through that. I think a lot of this stuff is important and gives context and kind of calls out some BS that's out there. But then I want to dive into Weeble and take a look at Tesla's stock price and just look at the chart and see how we're doing. All right. Before we get into it, though, do me a favor, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring that bell, and let's get into it. Here we can see my Twitter. Uh, I'm just going to scroll down until I get to where I want to get to. All right, here we go. So we'll start off here. I, I just clipped this and I posted it because I thought it was hilarious. GM, Ford, rising, Tesla falling, and EV car wars in US in the US Bank of America analyst says. This is, once again, I'm going to keep calling these out because I think it's comical. This is, once again, CNBS doing their thing. Of course, it's pro tier, so you can't click on it unless you're subscribed to them. But this is, again, just another, like, you you don't even need to, like, click on this to know it's FUD just because of what they're saying. All right, sure, Tesla falling. All right, sure, 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 buddy. Whatever you say. All right, this is interesting. Uh, my sources told me Elon is working in the factory. Tesla. Uh, hashtag Tesla stock. So, this has been something I've been kind of hypothesizing. That's why he's been silent. Now, as more time goes by, I don't think that's the only reason he's being silent. After all, we saw Franz recently tweet. We saw the people recently tweet that they're delivering vehicles and then Elon hasn't said anything. I do think we will hear from Elon tomorrow. My prediction is that we hear Elon give a congratulations note uh, out to all of Tesla worldwide, Berlin, Austin, Shanghai, Fremont, to say good job that he's proud of everybody that this was one of the toughest quarters of all time elon frequently does this after the numbers come out so my prediction is elon makes an appearance uh tomorrow so we'll see what whether or not that comes true all right prediction this is what i talked about elon musk tweets tomorrow around 9 to 10 a.m you heard it here first remember that uh happy canada day uh yeah so i uh, i said uh uh, out to Yashu, uh, happy Canada Day to really all Canadians out there. A lot of Canadians watch my YouTube channel, so shout out to all of you. Happy Canada Day. Don't go too crazy, but go a little crazy. Enjoy it. All right, what else do I have here? Okay, more media lies what I wrote. So this is uh, Lori uh, Garver, I think that's how you say it, um, regarding a CNN article that pretty much said that, uh, that quoted her saying that Elon is going to trip over his ego or something. But she says, I didn't say this. I've asked for a correction. I write in the book that SpaceX is running faster than the competition and that it will be hard for others to catch up in the next decade unless Elon trips. The reporter asked uh, what could trip him up and ego was part of my response. So again, once again, media, anything to do with Elon Musk, Tesla, SpaceX, FUD, narrative. You know, it's, it's ridiculous, but what's new? All right. Uh, this was funny. Uh, Sydney, uh, Tesla owners, uh, he's, he's this one. He literally got me laughing pretty hard. Don't call me for the next hour. So I'm busy. Thanks. Uh, so, uh, jo uh Joanna, um, uh, Kreider. So, uh, getting stoned podcast. She had an interview with Elon Musk. We, we were literally, literally listening to it. Me and my fiance, uh, this morning, I think it was. Yeah, I think it was this morning. Yeah. We we're sitting there listening to it. Okay. Yeah. So it came out last night at midnight. We're listening to it this morning and it, really great uh, interview, different context, different type questions than we normally see. So I really appreciated that. Uh, but she did a great job and we got some interesting new insights from Elon. So check it out. Great pro podcast. And again, shout out to uh, Sydney Tesla Owners Club. All right. Um, so this was interesting this morning uh, in the pre-market. GM stock was halted at $31.68, and we didn't know what was really going on. It was just halted out of nowhere. And then this came out. GM has 90,000 vehicles, and it's actually 95,000, so they changed it later, but 90, 95,000 vehicles in Q2 not being delivered due to chip shortages, aka not sold. They affirm full-year guidance. Right. My read, GM can't write firmware. They don't have software engineers that can fix this issue for them, something Tesla solved over a year ago. So Tesla, everybody in the, in the auto market was having issues with shortages when it came to, when it came to, uh, to chips. 
And what Tesla did was they pivoted. They took other chips, they rewrote the firmware for them, and then they leveraged those for their vehicles to fix the supply chain issue. And here GM is with 90,000 vehicles essentially complete and built, but they don't have the chips in order for them to take delivery. And the thing about this is with the auto world, until you have delivered it to the, to, to the end consumer, in this case for GM would be the, uh, the dealerships, then it's not considered a sale. So that hurts them for the quarter. So I don't, I don't even know what the actual quarter number was. I didn't even look at it today. And it's so funny. This is the only thing that caught my attention. I'll have to go back and take a look at what their quarterly numbers were. But this is a big deal because if they are having these issues now, What's it going to look like next quarter and the following quarter? Now, again, they affirm four-year guidance, but we'll see how that changes. I mean, again, they intentionally got the, the stock to be halted. Like, that's, that's wild. All right, let's scroll up. I told you, I tweeted a lot today. Okay, so this was a retweet. Uh, Gary Black saying, I like the setup for tomorrow. Tesla, uh, second quarter delivery print. Consensus expectations, 255000 Tesla reportedly pulled out all the stops to deliver cars last week, asking Europe customers to go to ports to pick up cars as they came off boats. No cars to test drive, all sold to customers. That's bullish. That is very, very bullish. L literally, people at docks, you know, I imagine like Bremerhaven, uh, Southampton, um, Antwerp, right? Those are all the main shipping docks there, especially for all these Roros, these car carriers. So that's where they were going. And they're literally going there and picking up at the, at the ports. So, so this is wild. You don't see this often. All right, scrolling up. Okay, nothing to see here. Check this out. All right, uh, what is it like? Um, he has a great uh, YouTube channel. He used to have a different YouTube channel name, I believe. I, I, I thought it was called Black Tesla. Uh, but anyways, check it out. This, this is uh, the second of two videos, actually, he posted with FSD Beta 10.12.2. And in the first one, he's going into uh, Manhattan, and he drives to Manhattan. I guess he's going to see Wicked with his family. He drives in, zero disengagements. And the second part, he's leaving Chinatown, gets all the way onto, uh, I think, the FDR, and no disengagements again. So check it out. It's really good. Lots of things going on. The visualization is impressive. People doing all kinds of crazy things. You even see another car right in front almost completely wipe out a bicyclist. The bicyclist had to go out of the way, go around the vehicle. I mean, it was, it's nuts. Absolutely nuts. This is why we need FSD beta. Well, we need FSD worldwide. All right, let's scroll up. Got more ads. Okay. Uh, whole Mars. When you're using full self-driving beta, or another supervised ADAS system, you're driving the car. The car didn't mess up, you messed up by not stopping it. Legally, you're responsible and liable for whatever happens. If someone gets hurt, you could go to jail. Don't be dumb. I figured, right, like, we might as well read this right after that post with the, about uh, FSD beta. Look at this again, just like GM, Honda June US auto sales down 53.6%. This is starting to look like a trend. And then finally, I went ahead and pinned this at the top of my, my Twitter account. Um, again, I reiterate, 270,000 vehicles is my estimate for, for tomorrow, for Q2. Now, again, this is ultra bullish. I get it. But here's, here's where I stand. We know that April had 10,757 vehicles. We know that China in May produced 33,544. We know that in June... Everybody says that Giga Shanghai has been going bananas. And we, we've heard about 72,000. We've heard rumors about 80,000 vehicles. So I'm going to say 75,000 vehicles here, okay? That's a high number. That would be a record number. But hey, if there's a time to do a push like this, when else is it other than now? Q2, we've heard about it going bananas, okay? So we know that it can do about 125,000, but maybe they just pushed extra hard and did another 10,000, got to 135,000. That, that one, I, I admittedly, is optimistic. Berlin, 9,000 vehicles. I don't think that's that optimistic. Again, about three weeks ago, we heard Elon essentially praise the Berlin team for getting to a, a weekly rate of over 1,000 vehicles a week. Three weeks since then, that's 3,000 vehicles. You're telling me in the previous two months and one week, they couldn't have done 6,000 vehicles? I think they probably did. Austin, 7,000. All right, this one's probably way off. Yeah, it's probably more like 2,000 to 5,000. But 
with the new Model Y long range, I'm just giving it a bet for the doubt. You know, it, it made it so it'd be a nice even number up here with 270. Although I could have made it 269, 420. I, I've seen a lot of people, or one individual mainly, whenever I was on Farzad's live stream and Yashu's, uh, that individual keeps saying 269, 420. You might actually be right on the money with that one. So it'll be very interesting to check that out tomorrow. All right. Uh, with that said, let's jump in and take a look at Tesla stock. Here we can see uh, Weeble. I'm going to go out. Well, let's just look at today first. So if, if I go out, let's say, um, let's go to the one minute chart here. All right. So here we can see we had a decent day. I mean, you can see that we were up um, at a certain point of the day. We got all the way up to $690 a share. So hey, it would have been great to see 700 again. But we still closed up in the green. We closed at, what was it, 681 about, 682. Uh, so, so not too bad. Um, let's see. What I really want to look at, if I'm going to come down here, I'm going to go to a, a one-year lookout. All right, so here's the one-year lookout. I know, not pretty. We don't want to relive this, but hey, we got we to gotta do some homework sometimes. All right, so here we can see what the overall downtrend was, okay? So we saw that, and then we broke out. All right, so this was a nice breakout, and this is where, if you were like me, you foolishly started buying back in, and I wish I would have waited. But hey, we can't time the market, so you find your moments. Anyways, so we came up here and then we hit about what 1158, 1160, and then we hit off of this and we came back down. So you can see this red trend line that I have down here, right? This is the bigger resistance that we're going to have to break eventually. All right, but let's zoom in. Okay, so, so we rejected this and we started to have this downward trend. All right, now recently we, we had um, almost an attempt, right? So we've had a couple, but this was the, the recent attempt right here. We saw this red line, we saw the trend. We thought we were potentially going to be able to come out of this, but we weren't able to. So this red line right here, this is kind of the resistance that we got to break. And we did break it for a second, and then we have been bouncing right back down. Now you can see, you can see that I have this blue line here. So what's the difference? Well, this blue line accounts for this recent break and then the failure of it to come or for it to come back down. But it also is touching the top of the wick of these candles. So this is kind of like a range, if you will. So although this is that breakout line, this is also considered another breakout line just because it's at the top of that wick. All right. Now, I don't honestly follow this stuff that much. I just find it interesting. But what's really interesting to me is if you look, we had we had this support here, right? We had this support here that we kind of bounced off once and twice here. Right. I don't think we did it again back here. Nah. So it's just these two. So we bounced off, bounced off, and then we went up higher. Right. That was that kind of fake uh, 1150. But then we came down and we just blew right past that. And here we've come up. We tried to break and hold. No. Now we're trying to again break and hold. No. So, you know, I guess if you're a big chart technical analysis person, you would say two failures like that. You're probably not going to get a third chance. You're probably going to start going down. Now, the other thing that was interesting is that you can see how all of these kind of converge at this one point right here, right? And we're seeing that again here. All of them converge at this point. So the only way I can really see us moving meaningfully higher anytime soon is if we get a very good number tomorrow. Tomorrow is the beginning of this hopefully next kind of call it bull run into the end of the year for Tesla. I don't want to talk about the rest of the market because I don't know what's going to happen with the rest of the market. Now, historically, when we've had such a bad first half, we tend to have a pretty good second half. Historically, that's what the numbers show us. But when it comes to Tesla, we need to have some real performance here. So I think that if they can print a decent number tomorrow, that we will start to see this recovery starting next week. And then once we get past the, the Q2 numbers, Right, because don't forget, there are some headwinds there. Let's say Tesla has a great, great delivery number. Even though they had a great delivery number, they still might have headwinds come to the quarter quarter earnings. One, because, well, there's always risk with Elon. Let's not kid ourselves. But two, because margins will be down. They're ramping up two factories that have very little production. And on top of that, you have to take into account that they have less vehicles they sold. All right, so, so that's going to play into all of this. And who knows how much more they had to spend on on transport to get vehicles actually delivered to customers, right? So things are a little different. So we might see compression on that margin that might be bad for the stock in the short term. But I think if we have a bad reaction after Q2 earnings, it won't last long because don't forget August 4th is the shareholder meeting, which means 
we vote on the stock split, which means Tesla's going to have a three for one stock split. So I think that that's going to be a catalyst going into August. I think we'll just blow by Q2 results. I think that's going to be put on the back burner. No one's really going to care about it unless there's some crazy thing. I mean, we already know about the Bitcoin impairment. We know about the margins. We know about the lower vehicle sales. So all of this should pretty much be baked in at this point. None of this is news except for some silly analysts who don't update their numbers. So with all of this, tomorrow, hopefully, is the beginning of putting all this noise and just garbage and horrible first, let's just call this eight months, these last eight months, putting it all behind us, and we can start moving forward to have a very nice second half of the year. Today was a great start, all right? July 1st, we ended with a green, uh, a green, uh, a green day. So let's hope we can take that, amplify it. Tomorrow, we're going to get good numbers. That's, that's my gut. We're going to get good numbers. I don't think they make a push like this, getting Franz out there and everyone, unless they were trying to do something, which is really going to surprise people. So I think tomorrow will be a good day. And then next week, we start. We're going to hit Q2. It's going to be okay. We'll get past that earnings call. And then we're off to the races. Stock split, AI day, amazing Q3, amazing Q4, right into the end of the year. So let's hope that's the way things play out. You never know what's going to go on, especially with the macro, especially with the Fed, especially with recession fears. So we'll see what's going to happen. But with that said, we're going to leave it there. Enjoy your weekend. I'll probably make a video tomorrow after we get the numbers. And yeah, well, enjoy the rest of your 4th of July. Enjoy the rest of your Canada day. I love you all. Do me a favor. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Ring that bell. Till next time. Peace.